Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey here, once again with another review on Arrow Season 5, and this is going to be for Episode 10, otherwise entitled, Who Are You? Now, obviously, before we get into it, spoiler warning, we're going to be going over the uh, main parts of this episode, so if you haven't watched it, you might want to go watch it, then come back to this video. And just one quick thing to mention as well before we actually get into the review, I haven't mentioned this in any of my other videos, I might mention it in the next couple of videos over the next couple of days. But if you haven't clicked that bell next to the subscription button, it'd be very much appreciated if you did so. It's just that people have been telling me that they haven't been seeing my videos in their subscription boxes over the past couple of days. Like, it's pretty recent in regards to people telling me this. So if you haven't done it, do it. It'd be very much appreciated. You get, like, notifications on your phone and on your emails. I'm not too sure about computers and stuff like that. But yeah, it takes two seconds, so it would be very much appreciated. Now, Arrow played out pretty differently than The Flash did yesterday as we kicked off straight from where we left off in the mid-season finale where Ollie returns to the Arrow base to all of a sudden find Laurel just standing there, alive, breathing, physically there. And for those wondering what I meant about The Flash, like they kicked off in episode 10 one month after the events of their mid-season finale in episode 9. Now the quote-unquote story behind this Laurel's return was pretty interesting as apparently the legends, including obviously uh, Laurel's sister Sarah Lance, saved Laurel and used the Wave Rider technology to save her life. I will tell you what, this Laurel can act pretty well because this was a pretty damn good story. Now, when Renee or Wild Dog found out that the Lance sisters have a habit of coming back to life, his reaction was hilarious. He was like, oh, okay, you're joking. Oh, oh, you're not joking. Oh, okay, this is new to me. Now, you saw Felicity, like, testing this Laurel with a choice between champagne and water. It might have gone under people's noses, if you know what I mean, like, you might have missed it. And this was because Felicity knew that the Earth One Laurel wouldn't have taken the alcohol. She would have taken the water. But it does show that this Laurel did her research, or was at least told a lot of information about this Earth One Laurel. But what an entrance it was by this Laurel when she finds Felicity snooping around trying to prove that she wasn't legit. Which obviously was the case as we see that Prometheus has broken Black Siren, otherwise known as Earth Two Laurel Lance, out of Star Labs. Now, seeing that The Flash did skip a month in between its mid-season finale and its uh, mid-season premiere, this event should have already happened in The Flash's timeline, so I'm not 100% sure whether they will mention it on Flash next week. If they do, it's a bit inconsistent, I'm just saying. But the backstory of Black Siren was pretty interesting and was one thing I was very much looking forward to in this episode. So she moved to Central City after Earth 2 Ollie died, where she got her abilities, obviously this Black Siren cry. She even makes reference to the quote that Earth 1 Laurel gave to Huntress in Season 2, I think it was, about like, letting the darkness in and stuff like that. Now, a nice little subplot within this episode was uh, Renee or Wild Dog and Curtis or Mr. Terrific and just how Curtis was feeling down about what happened in the mid-season finale about his husband and him splitting up and Renee just really like motivating Curtis and just telling him, you know, dude, just stop beating yourself up. Like, fair enough, every now and then you might want to do it, but you're constantly doing it lately. Believe in what you're doing. Which obviously, as we step into the back half of this episode, like gets through Curtis's head and he actually ends up helping save the day. Now, one thing I know is going to be pretty controversial about this episode, there is one other thing which we will obviously talk about towards the end of this uh, video, sorry. But the first part is the taking down of Black Siren in the warehouse. Personally, it did seem pretty easy. I think they really did dumb down Black Siren's powers in uh, this episode of Arrow. And that's just compared to Flash last season, like, they tested her powers when uh, she attacked Barry, and her cry would have easily killed a normal human being. Like, the only reason Barry was surviving it was because he was a metahuman and has, like, rapid healing. So the fact that Ollie, Felicity, and all the new recruits weren't at least getting knocked out by these siren cries was a bit random and a bit unbelievable, and the fact that Ollie could just stand there or, like, kneel down and cop it, a bit inconsistent, and they sort of, yeah, as I said, dumbed down the powers a bit. In regards to how they beat her... I've really no issue with that because it made sense. Curtis made like a dampener which reduced her powers. I know the Felicity knocking her out thing might be a bit controversial, but Felicity was the one that was really like hating on this Laurel the whole episode. So it is sort of fitting that she was the one that punched Laurel out. And as I said in my previous videos before this episode on Arrow, I wanted Prometheus in this episode, but I didn't want too much. And I think we got the right amount, which leads on to what we might deal with Prometheus in future episodes. And, uh... Yeah, it just uh, creates more tension between Ollie and Prometheus because Prometheus was willing to use his Laurel to get under Ollie's skin. 
Obviously, another subplot within this episode was uh, Diggle and Adrian Chase, and, uh, you know, uh, Ollie sending Adrian to sort of uh, help Diggle get out of the situation that he's in. It wasn't extremely interesting, but at least you got to see what was happening with Diggle. Like, they really can't just skip Diggle for a couple of episodes and just randomly come back to him. Uh, I, think they, I think they did a good job in this episode of involving those two characters, and I somewhat enjoyed it, even though it wasn't extremely interesting. So we do find out that Black Siren is actually locked up in Argus. I don't think they really specify whether it's the one where, like, Captain Boomerang and Deathstroke were locked up on. I think it's just an Argus secure facility, so it's probably not the one on Leanne Yu. But Ollie's locked her up there because he still feels there's a good part of Laurel in there and he feels that he can tap into that. So we will see this version of uh, Laurel or Black Siren again, whether it be that somehow she gets out of this Argus situation. You never know, they might randomly bring Suicide Squad back into the fold. Would be surprised if they did that actually. But yeah, I think in next season, like I don't think we'll see Black Siren on Arrow this season anymore. I think if we do see Black Siren again, it will be next season in Arrow and it wouldn't surprise me if she does take a turn for the good. Uh, maybe not completely good, she might be sort of like an anti-hero, like, you know, how like Captain Cold and Heatwave are on Legends of Tomorrow, sort of similar to that. So what I could see happening is that she does help them, but there is that like, a criminal tendency, if you know what I mean, where she still has that bad side to her. Now in the flashbacks, they were pretty crap this episode, I'm not gonna lie, probably the worst episode for the Russian flashbacks this season, if I'm gonna be honest. But it ended off with a pretty cool reveal of Talia Al Ghul, finding Ollie and actually rescuing him, but it was weird, like, Ollie was, like, hallucinating and saw Laurel in Talia Al Ghul's hood, which I thought was pretty, uh, pretty trippy, but Talia Al Ghul has actually been looking for Ollie, so it's going to be interesting to see why she's been looking for Ollie in the next episode. And then the end credit scene of this episode, we finally meet this new vigilante that's going to be joining the team, who is called Tina Boland, and she was in Hub City, but here's the controversial thing. She has a canary cry of sorts. Now, I think this is one of the biggest mistakes they could do unless next episode they really go into why she has it, whether she has a piece of technology or like how she's doing it. Because, and you know, at the end of the episode, like the, they were cleaning up the black canary statue and Felicity was going on about, oh, so you're going to fulfill the promise to find a new black canary. And, Ollie, and Ollie's like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then it cuts to this Tina scene. It's going to be controversial. Arrow's been really good this season. I don't think this is going to ruin the season as a whole. Like it'd have to be a massive screw up for them to screw up this Prometheus story and season five as a whole. But if they don't do it right, it's really like disrespectful to the Laurel character and, you know, just takes away any like need to watch the show that those Laurel fans have at the moment. Then it's a massive screw up and it's an unneeded screw up because she's not like a character that's really needed. But anyway, it doesn't really matter because we only got like five to 10 seconds of her in this episode. I think next week is going to be the episode where really a lot of us can decide whether this is a massively dodgy decision so if you are a bit hesitant saying, oh, no, drop an arrow, I would watch next week and then decide then because it is a big Tina episode from what I've heard. But overall, I thought this was a really solid episode. It was awesome to see Black Siren back. Some of the like Felicity Oliver stuff was a bit, uh, come on, move it along, guys. You're spending a minute too long here. Just keep it going. But I think the subplots didn't interfere too much with like Renee and Curtis and Diggle and Adrian Chase. I think they worked okay in this episode. My only one massive complaint around the Black Siren character was the fact that they dumbed down her powers like really basically everyone there should have been dead maybe apart from ragman if he was wearing his rags but yeah that's my only real massive like uh complaint about what they did with black siren but thanks for watching guys if you did enjoy the video as well as the episode it'd be very much appreciated if you could leave a like on it let me know in the comment section below what was your favorite part of this episode do you think they've made a massively bad decision by bringing in this tina character with basically the black canary powers and are you looking forward to seeing Talia Al Ghul next episode? And if you are new around here, it'd be very much appreciated if you could subscribe. And also, if you already are subscribed, just head down to the subscribe bar and click that little bell so you're always notified when I do upload. But I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Goodbye.